guest speaker dealing with how do we appeal to all disciplines. If figuration is such an all-encompassing idea, it doesn't need to have some outsider, so to speak, in an Elias sense. So I suggest we consider ourselves appealing to a lot of middle-range theory invited into figurations instead of being so caught up in you know, distancing ourselves from these small aspects of middle-range knowledge. Um, I guess I would consider myself a public intellectual, so let your arrows fly, ye gods. Um, detachments, uh, let's see. And I have a lot of detachment about this because I look at a lot of the facts in history, present or past. There are a lot of different partisan figurations in interaction, you could say. Um, and I think this competition of different subjectivities is an objective basis from which to analyze figurational issues. Instead of thinking of a figuration, think of multiple figurations in conflict over the same issues of hegemony or domination. I think I'm very engaged in this way. Um, this talk will be a kind of a discontinuous thunderbolt, bolt, so to speak, uh, a Kuhnian sense of a novel paradigm for comparative theory based on a lot of pieces of philosophical and sociological evidence and drawn from my long work uh, comparing Europe, China, and Japan over 3,000 years of history. For language games, uh, inter our independent variable here are human strategies of choice for the future, I guess you could say. We have choices that we can make to influence future figurations, our interpretations or our actions. And the independent variable that interests me most would be human environmental degradation or sustainability, comparatively. I will try to follow these slides very closely, um, one, to keep myself on track, and two, out of respect that English is second language to many people in this conference. Um, I also want to thank Lars and everyone who have helped organize this conference. I have enjoyed it immensely so far. Um, I typically hang out with environmental sociologists who are not historians or totally uninterested in such issues, so I would consider myself a comparative historical environmental sociologist, and there are very few of those. There are some, but there are very few of those. Anyway, um, main talk, future figurations, at least my future figurations. Three subtitles, how to unite social, biological, and physical sciences in the comparative sociology of jurisdictions, notes on the study of the history of jurisdictional formation and its change. Those are sort of the strategic research areas, and I think that we can uh, dismiss with Marx and Smith if we're going to analyze a materialist political economy in this way. Toward Elias's idea, both of inner scientific consilience, but how do we bring in middle range theory together in a more useful theoretical view? Here's an int some introductory quotes. By the end of this talk, you will understand this diagram. It looks sort of like some ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, but um, as Quinn says, you cannot understand the new paradigm by using the vocabulary of the old paradigm. So I'm attempting to express in this short talk a quick summary of this new paradigm that I've developed. Um, also by Alan Sika, for something to be utterly new and therefore absolutely foreign to Plato, Aristotle, Aquinas, Montaigne, or Hobbes, it must nearly by definition involve some invention, technological or sociological, which could not have been anticipated by earlier thinkers because of the limitations imposed on them by their existential circumstances. I have a section of the paper dealing why I think in our figurations at present, we have a lot of very good high detailed data that has not been accessible for many generations throughout human history, except for now, whether it be the internet, whether it be massive amounts of archaeological publications, or you know, fine textual commentary by many scholars around the world for 200 years at least. So there's the term, the marketing term, trialectics uh, is the term I would say. A novel synthesis for understanding the origins of social stratification conflict, cooperation, inequality <coughs> processes, or equality processes, historically worldwide. I will explain that later. Five points to this paper, uh, five sections. One, the method for scientific consilience for Elias in this conference can be potentially a sociology of jurisdictions, since jurisdictions are both social and material figurations. And I argue that there are already six areas empirically, but I'll talk about two of them in Elias where sociology of jurisdictions could be uh, drawn from. I will also talk about the dynamic patterns that I've seen in this sociology of jurisdiction as different intercompeting figurational alliances. I'll explain that term. Figuration is typically seen as something wholly shared between groups, but I want to say that we should con you know, take about the, the elites as well as people who follow and 
dynamics of how those figurations are developed is a political hierarchy. Um, jurisdictional figurations have different cultural frames that justify them, people who believe in different things you know, against each other. They have different allies because of their choices. Um, they develop different strategies against each other over time. But my point is, this needs to be a better way to think about how they're made, and not just how they're uh, historically, randomly moving through history interaction. That's very important, but it's not the whole story. Um, I argue you can see two basic historical processes in this jurisdictional change, both of them involving how one jurisdiction gets weakened and others become strengthened. And this is involved with degradation and sustainability. And I have two predictions uh, related to those scenarios. And in the future, I suggest perhaps connecting middle range theory in a conference about jurisdiction. Introduction. Uh, this talk represents methods I've used for about 15 years, refining them in the vocabularies toward analysis of a sociology of jurisdictions and human environmental history. Figurations are, I argue, jurisdictional figurations. There's something always to do with political power, internal stories about legitimacy, threats, use of violence, contention over the terms of jurisdiction, uh, and thus integrating conflict and cooperation in human history. Uh, figurations are jurisdictions both over human issues and material environmental issues towards sociological material consilience if we understand the phenomena of jurisdictions and their contentions in human environmental history. So jurisdictions, it's like a way to do this conference is consilience, though it's rarely studied in sociology. Or is it? Um, I would say, you know, first we'll have a dictionary definition. Um, now, obviously. One way to think about it is the right power or authority to administer justice by hearing and determining controversies. It's not just a state, but there will be challenges to a particular figuration over time. How does it adapt to these or not? It's also a form of legitimate or legitimated authority. There's two different terms there that I think are important. Legitimate authority would be authority that doesn't have to be intentionally constructed through violence or propaganda. If you, if you adopt that role without uh, a lot of pressure from yourself. Uh, these are the also involve the cultural stories and the material distribution, justifying this legitimacy. Uh, the extent or range is also important. Territory, spatial relations typically are connected with ideas of jurisdiction. Um, jurisdiction literally means law talk, if you translate it from Latin. So, you know, talking about the law, it's a performative aspect and it's an action. Practical authority granted to a legal body or a leader to deal with and make pronouncements on legal matters and to administer justice within a defined area. Um, the origin of this term, Middle English supposedly, right after the Magna Carta, when there was a huge breakdown and King John obviously did not agree with the Magna Carta. So it would be interesting figurationally to look at the origin of this term, I think, too. A sociology of jurisdictions. So that's the dictionary definition. What about a social science definition? You know, I, what are they? I, I, where are they? You know, surely jurisdictions have been studied before. Yes and no. Uh, basic literature reviews, there were none. Uh, no, so their jurisdictions are whole in the sociological literature, theoretically and phenomenologically in the abstract. Though, yes, they're studied in many particular cases in many areas. They represent a key to unite many different literatures in this way. Um, I did two searches, and I was quite shocked at how few there were from 1879 to 2012, and I found 100 articles over 130 years, none of those had anything to do with a synthetic analysis of what is a jurisdiction anyway. I uh, also searched JSTOR within the social science subsection, and I found 31 articles, and that's not very much. Many of those overlapped. What was the contact of these articles? Was it over 100 years of ripening sociological investigation? No. Uh, most looked past their own nose. They were very partisan. You know, from a point of view of plotters, partisans supporting a particular jurisdiction, creating something, building things, opposing something, noting a change in jurisdiction, studying a novel jurisdictional arrangement, or wishing to define the legitimacy for someone or knocking off someone else. No one was thinking about the phenomena when they're saying, what do I do? What am I doing by saying I want this jurisdiction or I'm part of it? No one bothered to reflect sociologically or comparatively what well, in the first place was a jurisdiction, or were its conditions or ingredients, phenomenologically. I found no one providing this definition, so I will. Um, jurisdictions spread their analysis widely enough to be the source of this consilience, I said. 
I think there's two aspects we can think about jurisdiction comparatively. There's the social science aspects that I'll describe in a minute, and what I would call their internal reference. What, what does it reference? It could be social, biological, or physical. You can reference particular forms of the family as the legitimate way that the state will be protected. Or if two you know, gay men want to get married, obviously a jurisdiction will come in in most countries and stop that. I mean, we're dealing with particular cultural, political figurations which preference certain internal reference. Um, protections for oil versus not really investing in alternative technologies is another good example of material uh, aspect. You can think of these as interactive. Their interaction is really the figuration here with materials involved inside them. And the interaction between different figurations. This, I think, is, owes a lot to Elias' conception of game models and how out of an amoral context of contention, you can have a structure without norms, which is still necessarily a structure you can analyze. Um, I suggest that instead of a singular political hierarchy in Elias's singular conception of a figuration, be replaced with the innate plurality of jurisdictional figurations and interactions changing all the time. Uh, so my sociological definition, jurisdictions are mutual figurations that can be studied for their common varied social science aspects their internal strategic reference, and their interactions. Um, the first half of this is the social science issues, legitimacy and violence. This is not necessarily favor. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. An ongoing interpretation. This is both an elite. So how is this going? Are they believing me? And should we believe them, or should we move to another jurisdiction? So you have interpretive aspects, as well as legitimacy and violence. I say, is this favor? No, because favor is talking about you know, legitimate violence, you know, how it is already legitimated. But I'm talking about contexts where equally violence can come first, like in Tilly's view, for instance. So contrast Weber or Tilly. You know, violence setting up a jurisdiction instead of believing a contract theory uh, view of jurisdiction. So I would say, this is my quote, the interpretively changing and not always agreed upon legitimacy of violence or authority in societies, and where sometimes the use of violence is used to achieve legitimated action by shutting people up. First half of this definition of jurisdictions, you know, continuing this, our jurisdictions are seen as contingent, short-term creations, temporary. They're involved with political clientelism. I, I draw something from Clifford Garrett. Uh, he talked of an attempt to popularize one interpretation by a storyteller, the, the Balinese state, where he felt the state was not necessarily based on economics, but was a huge theater state of storytelling about itself that people believed and followed. And, and and they got caught up in the story of the state. Um, Gears' ideas are connected to believe, taught, and acculturated stories. And for doing all these purposes, deputizing, delegating authorities. Also, you can pass your own interpretations as the legitimate judgments over others, even if they may be biased or unrepresentative. They can be representative. And it's hardly enough to simply claim jurisdiction. Jurisdiction has to be practiced and somewhat shared already or popularized after the fact as a belief system to work. An action and interpretation simultaneously defining the parties involved or attempting to establish a definition between parties. Jurisdictions are an action taken with a certain popular or popularized interpretation between elites and between the base groups they may appeal to or against other elites attempting to do the same thing. Um, I will skip this issue about Garrett because I've already talked about him. So we require a theory of intercompeting jurisdictions, in the plural, as the greater empirical reality to start instead of a singular jurisdiction, instead of a singular cultural frame, some singular authority of our analysis. We require more room thus for individual agency than the typical Elias definition of a singular figuration. Why? Because people can change their jurisdiction. They'll stop believing, they'll escape, they'll try to reformat the existing framework, and also, people design these strategies. We're talking strategies stratify. Strategies stratify society. Somebody's choosing particular arrangements over time. Sometimes they understand what will happen and they do a good job. But also, it could be totally accidental and they succeed despite being a failure. Um, or the accidental accretion is very important in interaction. So from an Elias type of question, you know, how can you have individual agency configuration, I have a different kind of answer because there are a plurality of jurisdictional figurations and people can move. And people can change their mind as to what they adhere to in their actions or interpretations.